Welcome to FCF Tucson, and thank you for visiting our broadcasts. Before we get into this message, we want to let you know that if you have any need for prayer or victories you'd like to share, you can let us know through the links in the video description below. And if you've been blessed by these teachings and would like to help us to reach others, you can securely give by visiting our website or clicking on the link again in the video description below. And lastly, please consider helping us to get this message out by sharing it or sharing our page with your friends and family. It is such an honor for us when you do. Thank you. And now, today's message. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 3. Amen. Y'all ready? We're going on an adventure today. I'm going. You can come with me if you want to. Thank you, Lord. You know, I do my best to uh, not preach anything I don't live. Sometimes that's hard to do because I ain't quite perfect yet. But uh, the, I remember Bob Yandian years ago listening to him. He said, the worst part about preparing my sermon is preparing my sermon. Because y'all just get, get convicted once on Sunday. I get convicted every day all week long <laughs> while I'm preparing it. So there's some truth to that. Keep finding stuff that I need to adjust. Ephesians chapter 3 and the 10th verse, we're reading from the, the New Living Translation here. God's purpose in all this, that is in all the preaching of the mystery of Christ in us, the hope of glory that the Apostle Paul had been called to do, he says his purpose in all of this was to use the church. Everybody say use the church. Use the church. To display His wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Amen. God wants to use the church. We've talk, been talking about being a supernatural church now for quite a little while. If you're keeping score, this is, I think, the 15th message on that subject. But uh, we've kind of gone off the track here the last couple of weeks, but we're still on the track. We just kind of went sideways from the, my five points in a poem that I had. But the, uh, Talking along the lines of the supernatural church, we pointed out that in Psalm 103, that in the seventh verse, that uh, Moses said, or pardon me, David said, he made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. The children of Israel saw the stuff he did, but Moses understood his ways. He understood that, uh, if, if you'll uh, forgive me for using such a horrible illustration in church, um, kind of like the Wizard of Oz, you know. There's somebody behind the curtain pulling all the levers. <laughs> Amen. And uh, we get to go behind the curtain. Amen. And see how the things of God actually function. We need to know not just uh, His works, but we've been learning His ways. Amen. Amen. How we access the ways of God. That gives, if, we, if we understand His ways, we don't just stand around under the faucet hoping somebody will turn the lever. You know? I mean, if you've got a faucet in your kitchen, the next time you walk in there, um, some of us got the, you know, the gear shift on there. But if you got, anybody got a, still got a faucet in your house that's got a... Yeah, okay. I like those better. I feel more in control. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Something about that lever. I don't think I'm going to quite figure out what it, how that works. But anyway, the... Uh, but when you, you know, you can have that faucet in your kitchen forever. You can throw all the dirty dishes in the, in the sink and just stand back and hope the water comes off. <laughs> That's kind of like folks that wait on the works of God. Yeah. We're just hoping God will do something. We're just sitting here in the sink, filthy, hoping, hoping God will wash us. Mm -hmm. Amen. 99% of the people in churches this morning are in that category. Come on. Just hoping God does something. Amen. You sit in that sink long enough without the water running, that, that all that dirt gets caked on there, don't it? Yeah. It's harder to get off. We need the water to come on when we need it, right? But we learn how to turn the faucet. We learn the ways of God. Come on. Amen. We've been learning how to turn on the water. Look at somebody and say, turn on the water. Turn on the water. Amen. Amen. I always feel like y'all are looking at me in a tone of voice that indicates you have no idea what I'm talking about. So I have to. Amen. We're learning how to turn on the water. And I'll just sit in the sink. Come on. Amen. So God wants to use the church. 
to fulfill his purpose in the earth and demonstrate his goodness, his power, his wisdom. And one of the things we noted in uh, the beginnings of our supernatural church journey was that church in the New Testament is supposed to be an us, not a me. An us thing, not a me thing. It's a we thing, not a me thing. That rhymes better if you're going to write the song. <laughs> Amen. But we don't come to church and then just... Uh, in the Old Testament, you know, Moses came down the mountain with the, with the tablets, with the Ten Commandments on them, told everybody what God said. A lot of people in the New Testament, that's, what we, we, that's how we've been programmed. We're waiting for the man of God to go up the mountain, uh, discern the Word, write the Word, bring the sermon, bring the Word of the Lord to us, and we just sit there and go, Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> But that's not the way it's supposed to work. I think we mentioned last week, that's one of the reasons we don't have a platform. A, I don't need one. And then B, I believe this really is supposed to be the place of level ground. Amen. Your gift and my gift came from the same giver, and therefore they have the same value. Amen. And it takes all of us to do what God wants us to do. Amen. So, it's an us thing. One of the things that uh, I do every year is I go away for a few days and do nothing but just get in God's face and see what the, the, the uh, plan is for the days lying ahead, see if there's any adjustments we need to make. And uh, as you know, I think I, sh I shared with you um, two weeks ago, with the transitions that are coming up. I already did that this year. It's not that I don't ever do that any other time, but there's usually just one time I go away specifically to pray about the church and the ministry. Most of the time it's just about me and being a better Christian. Because that takes a lot more work. I'm harder to change than preaching at you. But the, Amen. But with the things coming up the way they did, the Lord got a hold of me. A few weeks ago, while we were in Aramisio, and spoke some things to me that I knew I needed to get away right away and find out what the heck that meant. Because <laughs> it sounded like change to me. And that, uh, that uh, it needed to be implemented sooner rather than later. So, uh, with that in mind, we changed our schedule completely. And this week, Pastor John's going away. Amen. Amen. Boy, am I going to preach about that this morning. You better throw that thing away now. Because if you want to hear from God, you've got to throw away the cell phone. It's an idol. Don't get me ahead of myself here. The, uh, I got scripture for it now, brother. I found it today. The, uh, but uh, it seemed like with the, with the transitions we're going through that we ought to to uh, make sure that the Pastor John got a chance to go and see the Lord uh, specifically. But uh, with the emphasis on us and not just, you know, my middle name is Moses. Did you know the first prophecy I ever had as an individual person in the charismatic movement was that you're going to have a ministry like Moses? Amen. You're going to come down from the mountain with the word of the Lord. And she had some other stuff in there that was wrong, but... <laughs> I mean, I've been saved a few minutes and I'm laying in the floor and this woman's telling me I'm going to be like Moses. I thought that's pretty cool. But anyway, the, uh, then I found out you know, that he died before he got in the promised land. Said, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Come back here. I don't think I want to buy that one. So anyway, the, uh, but uh, the New Testament church is not Sinai. Amen. It's not one man going up the mountain finding out what God said. Amen. It's the Spirit of God living in all of us, speaking to all of us when He calls us together as a part of the family of God together. He's going to speak to all of us. Not just about our part, but about what the overall picture is going to look like. He's going to speak to all of us. This week, I'm going to take some time again to just pray, seek the face of God. But I want to call you to join us this week in seeking the face of God for what's going to be happening around here in the next few months, the next years, even the things that, that we don't even have any clue about yet, He may put in your heart. Amen. I'm a, I want to ask you, I won't beg you. I get Paul begged people all the time. I guess it would be all right. Uh, we did. Go back and read the New Testament. 
Amen. I implore you, I beseech you. Therefore, brethren, what is that? Beg, that's what that means. I beg you, take some time this week. Amen. To just seek the face of the Lord concerning direction. Uh, for, for FCF Tucson. Amen. And your place in it, how we're going to walk forward. You know, when we say seek the Lord, most people have all, uh, no idea what that means. I mean, I know because I've been doing this for years now. So when I say it, I know what that looks like. I know what I'm going to do when I get there. Amen. And when I, I mean, when I lock myself in the room, what do you do? I don't turn on the radio. Amen. Seek, seeking God is a term we throw about sometimes, especially in Pentecostal circles. Or we also say things like this, well, I'm going to get alone and just pray about it. Or if somebody says, well, you want to be a part of the, of the alligator wrestling team? And you, think, you say, well, I don't know. I'll pray about it. <laughs> Some things you just say no to right up front, right? I, just, I was trying to find something that wouldn't step on anybody's toes. So if anybody here is an alligator wrestler and I offended you, God forgive me. But, but you know what I mean. When people ask us to do something, they ask us about it. We say, well, I'll pray about it. Most people don't even know what that means. How do you pray about something? Not pray for something, but pray about something you're going to learn in the next 30 minutes. Aren't you glad? Amen. Seeking God is something the Bible says very specifically we're supposed to do. Hebrews 11, 6 is one of those scary verses if you read the whole thing. Most people don't. They said without faith it's impossible to please God. So we stop right there and preach 37 sermons on faith. But the rest of the verse says, he that comes to God must, everybody say must. I'm a firm believer in finding the musts and making a list. Because must mean if you don't do this, bad things happen. (laughs) Or if you want this blessing and you don't do the must, forget about it. Amen. Must is a tough word. Amen. Must believe that He is. How many of you believe God is? Okay. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Well, in our movement, because there was a, you know, when things get off track on one side of the road, you got to pull it back over. And what happens is we drive off the other side of the road, we overcorrect. But uh, everybody was trying to be poor in order to please God. But the, it says here, if you're going to please God, you got to believe he's a rewarder. So we spent decades trying to convince church people that God wants to bless them. God is a rewarder. I said, God is a rewarder. (laughs) That's good. But notice here who it is that He rewards. It depends. It's only us if we what? Diligently seek Him. So if you don't diligently seek Him, then you may not get no rewards. He said in his worst possible grammar. (laughs) Amen. In uh, Psalm 10, I know you all read that already this morning, but I'll read it to you. It says, The wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. Well, that's strong, isn't it? And then here's my favorite. Psalm 27, verse 8. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. And I love the New Living Translation of that particular verse. So I'm just going to read it to you because it makes me feel better. New Living Translation says, my heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I'm coming. I love that. Lord, I'm coming. Amen. Say that with me. Lord, I'm coming. Did you know when I go away to seek the Lord, that's the first thing I do? Usually if I go to a motel, I throw my dot kit in the bathroom and and, uh, try to find the energy bars. and. (laughs) Amen. Close the door, turn on the light, and say, Lord, I'm 
color. I'm setting aside this time just for you. Just for you. Lord, I'm coming. Say it again. Lord, I'm coming. Hallelujah. So, we're going to be praying about this week the process and the future of FCF Tucson and how that's going to work. I believe with all my heart that greater glory comes. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 3 popped into my heart a couple of weeks ago when, when I was praying about this. And he said that the uh, latter glory, amen, is going to be greater than the first. So I believe great things are coming. So this time, set aside time to seek the Lord. If it's just a half an hour, that's better than nothing. Well, I can't find a half an hour. Sure you can. But if you don't make time, here's the rule. If you do not make time, you will not have time. If anybody tells me, I'll do it when I get a minute, I just forget about it because you ain't going to get a minute. If you don't make time, you won't have time. That's the definition of fasting. It isn't about just getting hungry. It's about getting serious. What do you mean? In order to make time, you have to take time from something else. For most of us, that means laying aside something that we normally do in order to use that time to seek Him. Now, that may, the thing we normally do may not have any importance whatsoever because everybody thinks they've got something to do all the time. No, you don't. Come on. That's the essence of fasting. Laying aside something in order to seek Him with that time. Amen. Fasting is not about you getting hungry, it's about you taking time. You can fast anything Amen. that takes up your time. Amen. In Acts chapter 13, the first verse, first through the third verse, it said, Among the prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch of Syria were Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, Manaen, the childhood companion of King Herod, and Saul. One day, as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Dedicate Barnabas and Saul for the ministry to which I have called them. And after more prayer and fasting, they laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. As they ministered to the Lord, as they worshiped the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said. Amen. That's what we're looking for, isn't it? For the Holy Spirit to say something. That we under, he's saying stuff all the time. It's just we don't, aren't tuned in most of the time. See, fasting and prayer is about getting us tuned in. It's not, in, it's not about talking Him into saying something. He's trying to straighten us out all the time. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a big secret. The problem is on our end, the receiver end. Come on. So, what do you do when you get there? Of I tell Him, Lord, I'm coming. I'm here for this purpose. I came into here for the next half an hour. You got my undivided attention. Amen. <laughs> And then what do you do? I pray. Come on. How do you seek the Lord? You pray. How do you seek the Lord? You worship. How do you seek the Lord? We'll talk about the other one in a minute. John 4.23 says, The time is coming, and indeed it's here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way. What do you do? Worship Him. Lord, I'm here. The next half an hour is yours. And I just praise you and worship your holy name. Amen. Well, I can't sing. He don't know that. He said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Come on. Back in New York, we started a men's quartet called the Monotones. <laughs> and we were aptly named. Amen. Amen. The monotone. God doesn't care what you sound like. He just cares that you sound. Why? Because what are you doing? You're obeying Him. You're not auditioning for a choir. Amen. Amen. So you don't even have to sing. You can just lift your hand and say, Lord, I just worship You and praise You. Glory to Your holy name. You're the Most High God, the Maker of heaven and earth. I bow my heart before You this day. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you said I could come boldly to the throne of, of grace and find mercy and grace to help in the time of need. I'm here in a time of need. I need wisdom, Lord. You said that uh, you give to all men liberally and upbraid not if we lack wisdom. You said to ask of you and you would give it to us liberally. That means more than enough. So I thank you for more than enough wisdom. I'm coming boldly into your throne room, into your holy presence. I worship you and praise you. How do you seek God like that? And then what do you do? I pray. How do you pray? 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says, when I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. Come on. But my understanding is unfruitful. That's 14, 13. Amen. When I pray in the spirit, no man understands me, including me. Amen. But Romans 8, 26 says, when I pray in the spirit, that I'm making intercession by the Holy Ghost, praying for things I don't even know what they are. Amen. See, I'm just asking for generalized wisdom. I don't know what I even need wisdom for most of the time. I feel pretty wise. I'm wise enough to stay out of trouble. That's a big improvement. <laughs> Amen. But I, I'm just asking Him to fill me with His divine wisdom. He said I could ask and He would give it to me. So I ask Him and He gives it to me. And then I just... The, the thing on the inside begins to pray. That Holy Spirit on the inside begins to give me words that I don't know what they mean. To pray about things I don't know what they are. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. See, God is a spirit. Come on. He's not a head or a mind. And most of us, when we seek the Lord, we seek Him with our head. Some of you are saying amen. You have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> Others of you are kind of nodding knowingly, and I know you well enough to know you know what I'm talking about. But God speaks to us by His Spirit to our spirit. It's spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication. Come on. Amen. So part of the, of the goal when we start out to seek Him is to get our head to shut up. I don't know about you, uh, but I, mine is a, is a pain in my you-know-what. It just runs 90 miles a minute if I let it. Amen. I'm standing here preaching, thinking about where in the world did Oklahoma's defense go this year? <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm able to keep multi-tracks going on. You've got to stop that. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm just using the illustration. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, Lord, I love you. I praise you. I thank you. And I need to get the oil changed. <laughs> Come on. Isn't that right? Am I the only one that happens to? No, I'm not the only one that happens to. He said, there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. That means you are not unique. I know you like to think you're unique, but you ain't unique. Uniqueness is a dangerous disease. But we're looking for the, the impartation of God, not to our head, that comes later, but to our spirit. So in order to do that, we've got to get around our head because it filters stuff. Come on. <laughs> Amen. So pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And then here is the most difficult thing I'm going to tell you today. Shut up. <laughs> Be quiet. Hebrews chapter 2 and the 19th verse says, What sorrow awaits you who say to wooden idols, wake up and save us. To speechless stone images, you say, rise up and teach us. Can an idol or a cell phone or a rock star or a politician tell you what to do? The last three were added by me, by the way, in case you they may be overlaid with gold and silver, but they are lifeless inside. That includes the rock stars and the politicians. Although I must say, this week I experienced a miracle that I thought I would never see. There, I read an article that said, in an interview, Justin Bieber said that, that his goal in life was to be more like Jesus. And I said, if you had told me 10 years ago 
that there would be a day when Justin Bieber and I served the same purpose in life. I would have told you that you are nuts. But that just goes to tell you, God does stuff that, amen, <laughs> that we don't even think about Him doing. <laughs> amen, I read that and I thought, okay, good job, Beep. <laughs> All right, he said, he said, do not seek to hear from things that were made by man. And that includes your cell phone and your TV and your serious FM radio, XM, whatever it is. Go out in the car and look and see what it's called. Amen. Why? Because that is made by man. Okay. He said, I like that. They may be overlaid with gold and silver, but they are lifeless inside. But, verse 20, the Lord is in His holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before Him. What's he saying? He said, don't be trying to listen to idols, to things made by man, things that have no life. But shut up a minute. God wants to talk to you. Amen. Psalm 46.10, you know this one. He said, be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Now, this is kind of interesting because we, we think about be still means to be really quiet. And that's true. But this particular word, the Hebrew word, most of the places is be discouraged, be slack, faint. What's he saying in this verse? He's not just saying shut up. He's saying recognize whose presence you're in. Indeed, the purpose in this verse is to tell them, quit trying to do this yourself. You are a child of God. Whatever it is you brought into His presence with you, turn it loose and shut up and realize you can't do this. Be overwhelmed. I know that I am God. We sing songs for a purpose, you know. It's overwhelming. If you haven't been overwhelmed, you haven't been in the presence yet. Amen. In the Isaiah 36, the seventh verse. He's talking about the Lord coming on the day of the Lord and uh, bringing destruction to the wicked. And he says, therefore all hands will be limp. Limp is the same word as still in Psalm 46. 10. You get the point. When God comes, all of your best efforts are really pitiful. And that's a good place to be because then you can trust Him. Still, means laying aside every ounce of self-reliance. I just felt it come on me right there. If I fall over, excuse me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's just lift our hands up and worship. Thank you, Lord. Once you get there, now you're ready to start. Moving into that place of holy awe.
once you get there, keep your head turned off and your heart tuned in. You can feel it on the inside. You can get up and walk around and still know that presence. Thank you, Jesus. Be still. Hear what he said? Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. If my ushers could slip real quietly up. Prepare to serve the communion elements. Let's just stay in that attitude. We can leave the worship team down, it's okay. pass the communion elements right now. If you're a guest with us this morning, you're perfectly welcome to take communion with us today. You know, back in the Middle Ages, they fought a huge battle over whether the Lord was personally present in the elements when they're served or whether they were symbolic. I don't know if he's personally present in the crackers or not, but, but I do know this. I know he's personally present. Amen. Amen. He's personally present. When we take a moment to remember Him, be still and know that I am God. Worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Be still. You know, there's a knowing that happens in your head. There's a knowing that happens down in your heart. Old timers used to call it knowing it in your knower. I know it in my knower. I remember the day that I knew in my knower that there was a God. I didn't think there was a God. I didn't give it much of a chance. But in the moment as I knelt by my bed in my ugly apartment bedroom, I knew there was a God. I can't tell you how I knew it, I just knew it in my knower. Didn't make sense, didn't know who he was, didn't know which direction I had to do to locate him, but I knew there was one. He said, be still. I said, no. I'm convinced you can't. No. Until you get still. He is God. Wait on the Lord, listen to His voice, they that wait upon the Take some time this week. Stay with it until you hit that spot. How will you know when you do? Peace. Your head will shut down. All that stuff that seems so important is not important in the presence of Almighty God. If you know that He is God, you can relax. He's got this. You know, the Lord Jesus at that last Passover meal and the first communion to that he said he said this bread is my body it was broken for you as we sit here in his presence this morning, just close your eyes. I want you to think about Jesus looking at you, handing you the bread, saying, this is my body. And it was broken for you. that I'm God. 
Let's take and eat. Jesus, we're so grateful. Thank you. Can you imagine? The Lord Jesus Christ took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. You be still and know that I am God shed my blood for you so that you might know that all my promises are yes and amen. Let's take a drink. Wait on upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Second verse. Wait on the Lord. Take time. Let His Spirit move. You'll know where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is peace, sweet peace. Let's sing both those verses from the top. Wait on the Lord. Listen now. Listen to His voice. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Wait on the Lord. Let His Spirit move. Where the Spirit of the Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm going to give you three things. In case you hadn't figured it out, the Lord interrupted my sermon. We try to, we try to give him, you know, he's funny that way. He takes a notion he wants to do something. It's just best just to let him do it. But while we were in his presence just now, I'm relatively certain that God spoke some things to some people in this room. He didn't do, do that just so I get to sing that song I hadn't sung in 20 years. Three things that will help you as you wait on the Lord. And he speaks to you. He guides you. He puts things in your heart. Um, how many of you ever left a service just knowing you heard from God and were all fired up about it. By the end of the week, you couldn't really remember what happened. We leak. And more than that, when we get back out in the world, 
our head kicks back in. Sometimes I've discovered that if I go get silent again and get into his presence again, he'll bring it back to me. I've had that happen after a period of years even. Bring stuff back to me. Amen. The three things I do when I go into the, to the, that place of peace, that place of stillness, and wait on the Lord, I always go with my Bible in hand. Because God speaks through his word. Amen. But don't get caught up in just reading. Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a bullet point guy. If I'm not careful, I will think, okay, I've got to read the whole book of Isaiah. And then I'll start thinking about, well, okay, where, what was the year the king Uzziah died? I've got to go look that up. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? What am I doing? I'm reading my Bible and I'm back over in my head. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I, I like to read the Bible inspirationally in those times. Not to study, but to let him speak. So I, I tend to go only where he tells me to go. In those moments where I feel impressed, I just have a desire to look. But also, if, somebody, if uh, I hear something in the Spirit, uh, I find it important to verify from the Bible that it lines up with the Word. Because there are other voices in the world, you know. Amen. So make sure it lines up with the word. The second, or the next thing of the three, is whatever he speaks to you, write it down. Keep a notepad of some kind. If you can't discipline yourself uh, with your tablet or your cell phone, <laughs> then uh, turn those things off and use a piece of paper. There's a, if you're writing a note and some, something bings on your cell phone, don't go check that text while you're waiting on the Lord. You can't just jump over to Facebook and jump out of the presence of God. He doesn't like that. That's called idolatry. Amen. Write it down. Write it down. Why God speaks to our hearts. Our hearts inform our hands. Our hands write the vision. The vision inspires a plan. No writing, no plan, no plan, no fruit. And secondly, along those lines is, if, if I'm in that presence and I all of a sudden start having an overwhelming urge to paint the bathroom, Y'all are laughing. I'm just telling you this is what happens. Yep. Something will happen. I'll hear a noise outside, you know, and, and that little thought flashes. And Golly, that's probably the hot water heater. I better go drain it. I haven't drained it in three years, but today is the day I need to go drain it. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? When that stuff comes in your mind, you recognize that it's just clutter. I mean, it may be true. You may need to change the oil. You may need to drain the hot water. It may be true. But that's when you get your little piece of paper, write that down, and then forget about it. Sometimes writing down the natural stuff helps me to declutter my head. Because Once I've written it down, it's on my to-do list, so we'll, I'll catch that next time. Amen. And then finally, schedule it. If he speaks something to you, you know it's God. Schedule it. Put it on your calendar. You need a calendar. God works by dates. Did you know that? Go read your Bible. When he says that uh, Israel's going to be in captivity for 70 years, they're going to be there for 70 years. Amen. Amen. He's very specific. He didn't say, well, sometime around in the spring, why don't you do the Passover? <laughs> no, on the 10th day. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Very specific. Very specific. So he want, when you put it on a date, now you've got reality. Amen. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 2 said, Daniel understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord. 
Amen. Daniel knew that it was going to be 70 years. How did he know? He read Jeremiah's prophecy. Everything he tells you or that you think of, put it on the calendar somewhere. Your to-do list, your appointments, something that gives it a real life. When you put it in time, it goes from being a pipe dream to being a plan. Amen. Vision without a plan is a pipe dream. Amen. Bring your calendar with you to your prayer closet. Pray over the things that are coming up. And then bring your calendar to church with you. And listen for coincidences. What does that mean? Places where what God's put in your heart intersect with what God's put in other people's hearts. Why? Because He didn't call you by yourself. You're not Moses, neither am I. Amen. And he wasn't by himself anyway. As a matter of fact, when he tried to do it by himself, you remember what happened? God sent his father-in-law to tell him, this thing you're doing is not good. It's going to kill you. You need to get some help. <laughs> Amen. 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 Give it reality by putting it on paper and then compare what God put in your heart with what God's put in other parts of the family and see if there's not a connection. Amen. See where what God speaks to you fits in with the rest of the body in your community of faith. Amen. And right there is where I was going to serve communion. We already did that. So let's stand up. If you didn't do it just now, take a moment right now and write down whatever the Lord spoke to you while he was so clearly present in our midst just now. Whew. Hallelujah. We want to specifically invite you to hang around and uh, chew the food and then chew the fat. Y'all know Y'all too young to remember what chew the fat means? Yeah. Don't, be, don't be lying now, John. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God. There we go. All them old people talk about it. Yeah. That means the chit-chat. Amen. Amen. And we're going to uh, proceed. Somebody's going to give you instructions here in just a second how not to hurt each other, how to get while we get to the food. And uh, the pep, the... Uh, Sweet potatoes are not that hot, so you're safe. Judy ate some yesterday, and she said they were good. So that just lets you know that weenies are accepted. <laughs> All right? Amen. I want to pray over you, and then I'm going to let John give you instruction. Father, I thank you for these precious people, for the privilege of being a part of this family. Precious, precious people that you've connected us with, You've made us one. You've given us a like attitude toward life, toward the things of God, and a desire and a hunger for you. Father God, this week, as we seek your face, I believe that you will reward us with wisdom. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen.